when you were when you were birthed out of out of the water in baptism you're supposed to be a new life you're supposed to be a new a new creation uh so greater that you may walk in the newness before. of life like in romans yes yeah. because if you if you die in him you rise in him as well you live in him so we're back to the idea of what's new in christ and of course last time we talked mainly about the new understanding and relationship that we have with god through christ and we also talked a lot about the uh, new covenant that that christ ushered in and this time really going to be focused on on the other pieces that we mentioned which are uh, the new life and new creation that we're that we're afforded through uh through christ i keep thinking of this was in sunday school you have the the question of Christ has died for us. He is now at the right hand of God. Now what? Yep. Now what? This is the time where we have newness of, of life. We've read just this morning in 1 Corinthians in 15, for as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. We have a new life that we can have access to through Christ if we choose to abide in him then he will give us access to to this newness of life. One, just a newness of relationship with, with him and with our father through him, mm-hmm. which also gives us the ability to walk in spirit, which opens up so many things in your life and, and really does. It's transformative, I would say. Yeah, yeah, and I definitely think whenever, whenever the scripture mentions this, uh, you know, renewing of of life and and spirit it's definitely it's definitely talking about the 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 kingdom as well it's talking mm-hmm. about eternal life right. being resurrected and raised to life but there's also a piece of that 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 we get to experience now which is just your your life should be changed and different and made so much better when you come into relationship with Christ. And I think that's where baptism really, really comes in, in terms of a, a scriptural theme. Of course, uh, one of the, just one of the greatest, most direct uh, sort of baptism verses, uh, Acts 2.38. Uh, absolutely, absolutely love, love this one. It's uh, just, just like we talked about John 17 and three is one of those just sort of, Put it on a poster versus for the one God. I think uh, Acts two thirty eight is is sort of that for the idea of of bat- baptism. Uh, so repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for for the forgiveness of your sins. And I know I'm probably not quoting that completely correctly, but um, just if we are baptized into Jesus then we're also baptized in into his death and uh, i think paul talks about that as a way to uh, that's sort of how you symbolically put to death your your flesh because you take part in jesus's death without without having to to truly experience it so when you were when you were birthed out of out of the water in baptism you're supposed to be a new life you're supposed to be a new a new creation uh so greater that you may walk in the newness before. of life like in romans yes yeah. because if you if you die in him you rise in him as well you live in him it's it's not so that you just you know you know been there done that get the t-shirt it's it's really a it's it's just an amazing moment in in each person's walk of faith to to meet with with christ uh in in his death taking part in his death also taking part in his new life well in when jesus was alive before the his death and resurrection repentance and baptize were being preached very often and they were being preached together yes we we tend to look over that i feel like a lot of times in modern church of with baptism there's also repentance okay this i i really feel like we are stripping baptism of what it is when we just say 
it is an outward showing of, of what has already happened on the inside that you're stripping baptism of what it is yeah. so this idea of changing our minds truly repenting because now we can do that through christ christ has given us the ability to, to repent and then we are baptized into christ jesus into his name we are baptized while he was teaching during the times that he was on earth mm-hmm. you have a certain understanding of of baptism and, and this idea of repentance and it was beautiful then but then we get in romans the parallel mm-hmm. of what you were just talking about repentance and baptism still to go together now we're not saying that every time you have sinned and you you repent you have to go get rebaptized that that is not that was not the point but when you are baptized into christ with this new understanding of who he is with this relationship that you did not have before with him nor did you have with the father because if you don't know his son you don't know the father Mm -hmm. you are being buried with him And, and it says if you if we are buried with him then surely we will partake in a resurrection like him Mm-hmm. that to me alone tells you the importance of this new life that we have through Christ that comes through way of baptism here on our during our time on earth but in the kingdom mm-hmm. that resurrection is what we're trying to achieve we want to be in the kingdom yeah that I, you are probably so tired of hearing me say that that is my favorite image because I say it so often that is one of my favorite it, images that we have in scripture is in baptism you are being buried with christ so that we can partake in a resurrection like oh my goodness it makes Mm. me emotional every time yeah and in another place in uh in romans 6 so that you may walk in newness of life so once again it's it's both pieces it's that life in the kingdom that aeonian life uh the future eternal life but it's also a new life while you're here on earth a new opportunity you walk in a different way you operate in a different way um, even even though we're not saved by our works it, it says in in John as well uh, they'll know that we are uh, that we're Christians by our by our love you know mm-hmm. uh, by the way that we treat people so, so our actions are a way to identify ourselves as people who are in Christ so we should have a completely new life after that point where it's distinguishable. The The life change is, is distinguishable. After that moment of, of repentance and, uh, and baptism, uh, and I just wish so greatly for just the greater, the greater Christianity, the greater, uh, you know, God serving world that that was something that was that was taken more seriously because i think it's it's just been it's been washed and diluted so much um and it can be so much more than that it can be such a wonderful moment and it's not about all the all the other people it's not about that like i don't i don't want to diminish anyone's experience if it's if it's something that that really means a lot to them but you can show your friends and family that that you've repented and that you're a christian without you know without having to get in in a pool of water that's not what it's about it's not about Mm -hmm. other people it's about you and christ that is what that moment is when your dad expresses when he baptizes when he baptizes someone he said that he feels like that is the what his taste is of being outside of somebody's tent of meeting when he says that you get chills down your spine because you Mm -hmm. realize this is important to christ this is something do you feel it uh, correct me if i'm wrong do you think that's what they would mean when in galatians and they talk about clothing yourself with christ after baptism you are you were baptized into christ and have clothed yourself with christ talking about your actions so you've taken you've taken on this identity with christ Mm -hmm. is that what that would mean yeah absolutely and at when you when you said that um one one time 
you know, I, I kind of, I, I think one thing that we don't always think about is, you know, the Passover. So when, when we, um, let's see what during the Passover, they, they would slaughter the lamb. They would put the lamb's blood on, on the door to signify Whoa, and, okay. and take identity with with God through through that lamb's blood. That was that was them assuming the identity of of the people of God. It's not that God didn't know who the Israelites were. It's not that they, it's not that he didn't know, but he he gave honor to those who who showed, you know, and and chose to exhibit the identity of the lamb. Uh, the identity that the lamb gave them when we're baptized and then we also Mm -hmm. choose to take the identity of the true lamb the final passover lamb because jesus jesus is our passover lamb um we take on that identity in hopes that one day when uh when the time comes then God's wrath or God's final judgment or final punishment will pass over us as well because he'll see the people who are wow. identified with Makes Christ. So, much sense. so I'm, I'm not, I don't, I never want to editorialize or, um, you know, make a, make a midrash of, of, the scriptures and and think that that's what it means but sometimes sometimes there's connections like that that i think are very important um because i think taking on that identity god looks very very well upon that he wants us to do that so when we're clothed with christ we have his we have his protection we have his um we we have the spirit the spirit of Christ within us, uh, and that's there's definitely a connection between baptism and and the spirit as well. Uh, I think through through scriptures that's that's definitely a um, that's definitely a strong connection. Uh, no matter what you believe about spiritual gifts or or the administering of of them or anything like that, there's definitely a connection between the two. Um, so that's part of it as well. Um, living living a life with with the leading of the spirit that is certainly a new life um that's that's certainly a part of of that that new opportunity so the the new life that we have in christ here that is a taste right of what we'll get with the kingdom when we have true fellowship with christ and also true fellowship and relationship with god yes absolutely so we have some of the good now some of the good also we have a lot of the bad which Mm -hmm. won't be there so like you said we get that little taste that it's similar it's that's kind of what it's talking about in the scripture where it talks about like we prophesy in part so spiritual gifts are our taste of the kingdom right now that is god's spirit working and this idea of it, them dwelling among us of i would say christ dwells among us when two, where two or three are gathered in his name there i am among them mm-hmm. that doesn't mean god doesn't work i i, I want to be sure that we say when christ is is working we're not saying that god doesn't work as well they mm-hmm. are of the same accord they are of the same purpose christ is fulfilling his father's will but i don't know so when we when we have tastes of the kingdom we only do that in part yes. so when we have <laughs> fellowship with both our messiah and god our father the creator that's that's going to be something that is it's overwhelming to talk about we can't fathom what that would be like yeah and even even to have it in part now is is greater than than we deserve and it's also greater than we could be able to comprehend on our own so 
to think of when we have it in its fullness is it's uh, it's incredibly it, it's just overwhelming it it's it's just crazy to to think that when we have those moments where we feel so close to him and we we feel like like he is leading us or that he's done wonderful things in our lives there's so much greater than that mm-hmm. there greater than than we could ever imagine still waiting for us uh, it's it's got to motivate you and and put a fire in you to just work every day towards that moment the absolutely because the new creation that is ahead mm-hmm. the when the new heaven and the new earth when when the old passed away and Christ returns to earth to establish the kingdom that is something worth fighting for we a lot of revelation, especially when when I first started coming to the church, I really struggled because revelation is a difficult book. When yep. you're dealing with prophecy, it's difficult, especially we can look back on the New Testament and see how Christ fulfilled all the prophecy of the Old Testament. That That's clear. When you have so much prophecy that has yet to be fulfilled... It's just difficult. You have to be careful because you don't want to start making assumptions and then you're you're basing your life off of something that you only understand in part. Mm-hmm. So when I first started reading through Revelation early on, I was very confused with this idea of the thousand year reign. Like I didn't understand the point. I didn't understand what 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 is the deal with this. And Dan, Pastor Dan, sat down with me and we were working through it and I was like, Grand- Granddaddy, what does this mean? I, I, explain it. And he just said, think of it, this is the way he described it, and it helped me so much. Think of it as Christ is preparing the kingdom, which God has appointed him to, to reign over, but he is preparing this kingdom for God to return and for God to have fellowship with his people that there will come a time where Christ, you know, turns to the Father and, and, and has the Father look at the good in the kingdom. I want to experience the time in the resurrection when that tear is wiped from our eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> it's 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 just such a a wonderful thought. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't say that um, that. God himself will just, you know, dry up the tears just by his power. It says that God will touch each one of us and dry the tears from our eyes. He will he will have that connection with each one of us and ease all of our fears, all of our worries, all the all of the pain that we that we could feel. And then that's when that's when the true redemption is and that's when perfection is achieved is is when he returns and the final enemy is slain uh, i think the book of revelation can be extremely daunting uh it can and it's it's not exactly to be taken just at face value so i think you can look in some other places where um where you know the the resurrection and and the the end times are discussed and one of those is actually i i know we didn't get to that part today in in service actually but i read down a little bit um in first corinthians 15 paul actually discusses that it talks about uh of course those those who are in christ will be will be raised first in the in the first resurrection uh and then christ will will reign with them and and just sort of rebuild and it says until his his enemies are are made a footstool for his feet so um and then you know uh then there's that second resurrection i i it's in general to give a definitive answer on what it's going to look like is very difficult but the main point of it is you want to be in that moment where for eternity 
you are with God, you are with Christ, and you are with only God's people. That It breaks, it really does break my heart in so many ways when you hear, this is pretty popular among oneness. Mm-hmm. There is no more need for the sun. When, when it, mm. when you talk about this idea of Christ reigning as king, like when for somebody to say there is no more need for the sun, how can you say that? It's so evident that Christ is going to play such an important role in the establishing of the kingdom. Yes, because. He is to be the king. He is to reign. That That is what God had promised him. Christ did all of what he was called to do on his time on earth. He was sacrificed. He is at the right hand of God. He is working. He is the active head of the church. Talk about a daunting task. The, the head of the church. That means all the body of Christ. He is the head. For somebody to think there is not a need for Christ now, mm-hmm. to think that he was just here to be sacrificed, the, the the flesh, this idea of the flesh, there's no need for, for that anymore because the flesh was killed, is just, it has to be offensive to Christ because he is working and he is doing so much. He is carrying out so much of the will of the Father. Mm-hmm. And when that time comes and when Christ returns to establish the kingdom and restore the earth, back to in the time of when when God first create him, created Adam and Eve, I think about how perfect that must have been before sin entered. Mm-hmm. And that is what we are fighting for now. That is what our per- that is what we're trying to get to. Yeah. Yeah, because right now we're not we're not there. The no. <laughs> the enemy isn't gone. Absolutely not. If if you think that if you think that he is, then that's just very very interesting. Because uh, I I just don't I do not see how this could be even close to uh, that that perfect state that will that will be in. But. Uh, the ultimate enemy will be completely destroyed. He'll have zero dominion over the world anymore. God's reign and Christ's reign will be restored to the earth completely and in whole. There will be no room for for any sin. There will be no room for for any evil. And therefore, every every need will be supplied. Every every want that we could that we could have will be will be fulfilled. And we won't we won't need anything else other than just to dwell with him. It'll be true true perfection, and we'll just get to worship him for all of our days. and And I don't think we'll get bored. I don't think we'll have to constantly find things to do, because I, honestly, that's that's a thing in our in our brains that, we, that our mortality gives us is we you cannot know, comprehend to make sure that we that we use our time wisely. Right. Well. To use our time wisely, we just need to be we just need to be doing the things of, of God so that we can get to a time where we have unlimited time. Where time is not finite, yes. Yep. And you said it so perfectly, just uh, of our needs being provided. We will mm-hmm. be provided for. It will be a time of our focus truly is on worshiping. When Christ returns and you see the scripture every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that's not going to be our first time i think that should be the the goal of all christians don't Mm -hmm. let that be the first time your knee bows and your tongue confesses that christ is the lord yes because when we when we die in christ and we're going to be resurrected at his return like the the ability to worship him in fullness and to experience his glory and all of the blessings in fullness that gives you purpose in life when when people go about life aimlessly without a purpose that's where it's our job to to express this because Mm -hmm. it does give us purpose yeah, uh, absolutely. There's just there's greater. 
there there's bigger than this there's better than this and it's it's not a horrible life and a horrible awful journey to get there it we're we're promised that we're going to be persecuted and we'll go through struggles and uh when when you're at your best that's typically that's typically when when the enemy tries to attack you and bring you down so it doesn't mean that you won't have struggles but if you if you live in Christ you get his blessings too you get his goodness too you get uh God's God's perfect love and and provision and and light as well so you you have a little bit of the bad but we also have the tools to to get past it and that's not to say there are people going through things that we cannot comprehend Mm -hmm. the lord sees that god sees that just like when you talked about putting on the identity of Christ. God sees those things and he will bless them. It can be so difficult because when you have put on, you know, the armor that Mm -hmm. the armor of this truth and of Christ and that God has given us, you at times are feel invincible right when you're at, at a high you feel like this is the strength that comes from god but when you're at a low point it's hard mm-hmm. and just know that god does see that and he will bless your faithfulness in those times and even if it's not until the day that we do bow our knee and confess with our tongues if the Lord can can look at us and say I know you 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 knew me and just I am proud if he can look upon us and say it is good then it will make all of those hard times worth it 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 absolutely it absolutely will and that's that's the hardest thing sometimes is that you can't so, some people choose to some churches choose to say oh well you know if you if you pray this much then then you're just you'll automatically have a, a better life in this life that's the complete opposite of of what we're we're promised so there will be struggles but there's always something greater ahead and god doesn't doesn't ask for us to be greater than we can be he doesn't ask for us to be greater than perfect. He doesn't ask for us to be perfect at all. He just asks for us to yield to him and his leading and to find peace with him through our Lord Jesus. Because the Lord Jesus, as an example, he went through the most awful trial that any person could have, completely faultless. 100% faultless and yet he was still persecuted and, and and killed but he put his trust in God that uh, that his hope would be restored and it was he was resurrected so we need to keep that strong faith and have no fear at all of, of anything that can that can come forward and and hurt us because no matter what if we if we live a hundred years or if we live one more day, after after this life we have the opportunity for so much greater and that's what the purpose of this life is 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 to get there and that's what that's what paul meant when he said to run the race that has been mm-hmm. set before and if this idea of fighting the good fight so all of the things that we've talked about this the new understanding and relationship with god the new covenant new life new creation of th- it all can be summarized into this idea of a new hope. Mm-hmm. Christ is our new hope. Yeah. He's the only reason that we can continue to fight and that we can continue to run the race that has been set before us is because of the hope that is found in him. 
Thank you for watching 21st Century Reformation. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel so that you can get access to hundreds of hours of One God teachings, sermons, and discussions. For more content, click the description box below to have access to 21st Century Reformation's website along with all of our other social media.